Hello, hello, hello! I'm finally getting around to filming my pickups from February 2023, and we got a couple of unboxings to do. Well, technically just one unboxing, because you see, this is the Serpenter that's staying in the box. This is the one I've already unboxed, the second one that came in from the second round. And yeah, we're gonna go over good old Serpentor. I know many, I'm sure Serpentor himself would expect a lot of pomp and splendor about his unboxing, but, you know, screw him. Besides, with how complex that box was, how everything was packed in there, yeah, I would have had to cut away anyway. Not quite as much so with something from SH Figu Arts or, or Max Factory, their Figma, so finally, I got Sailor Chibi Moon in the house, yeah! And look at the price I got her for. I went to one of those collector shows, and there she was. 40 bucks. When normally, uh... An SH Figure Arts figure like this will start you at at least $50. And this one, I usually saw at $60 everywhere else. Either in a store, or online, like a Big Bad Toy Store or something. But, here she is. The Little Pink Tower. You know, I never understood why people hate this character, but I think I know why I didn't. Because... Is there, is there tape? No. Okay. Whoop! Already set some stuff. Alright. Set that down so I don't have to go picking up a whole bunch of... Okay. Okay. Okay, some pla at least I don't have to reach under her skirt like some of the... Uh, like I gotta do for the... For Max Factory Figma. It's like Umi Ryazaki, that was brand new, and I had to... Uh, dirty. So yeah, like I said, I do not hate this character. I think it was because the original English dub passed me by. This was not my gateway drug into animes, Magical Girl or otherwise. The aforementioned Magic Knight Ray Earth was. So... I was introduced to her properly when I was able to secure uncut DVDs later, so I was able to see her pull out a fucking gun in her introduction, as she should have. It's like, yeah, I need your clothes, your crystal, and your motorcycle. <laughs> Derp. Anyway, mess with her gun again in a minute. Let's see what... See if her accessories... Uh, got a different hair piece for when she... Powers up into Super Sailor Chibi Moon. We got an extra happy face. And we got her screaming, I'm gonna kick your ass face, but not really. Because, yeah, their pink sugar heart attack never really worked. So now we go through this rather disturbing face swap. Get the hair piece back on. Yeah, Ray's kick some ass. So let's get that thing out. And... Alright, got that fuckness over with. I finally got it with the proper gripping hand secured. Just use... <sighs> now hold the damn pink, pink moon ride heart stick thingy whatever. Yeah, hold it. Like, you're gonna launch that usually comically ineffectual attack. I mean, yeah. Yeah, sh Chibius is not the most useful in battle, but we still love her anyway. Well, those with sense do. Again, I do not get why people hate her so much. Supposedly the original dub made her more bratty, but... At least you got the new dub where she's played by Sandy Fox. And in the fourth season, you have Barbara Goodson voicing Zirconia, which makes sense because she's also voicing Rita Repulsa. So, and when did both Sandy Fox and Barbara Goodson work together? Well, the original Disgaea. Fun little tidbit. Anyway, I was worried for a bit that how hard it was to secure the wrist joints and how, how tight those were and how loose the elbow joints are. I went back and checked the original box, but yeah, we got the sticker of authenticity there, so maybe it's just lower quality for the animated color repaint. 
else, because I remember feeling very meh about the Sailor Pluto re-release way back when. <sighs> but whatever. I'm still gonna have fun posing her with Sailor Moon herself. She's gonna look great on my shelf with the other Senshi. And while we're on the subject of little anime girls, I also picked up Mei Ling Lee, because I doubt that Max Factory will ever make a figma of her. And luckily, she scales with her buddy Sukura, Shaorang, Tomoyo Dodoji. She scales with all of them. This was from toward the end of the 1990s, like to promote the the English version of the card Captain Sakura we had back then. And I don't know what it is. Was well, Max Factory doesn't want to do like the anime only clam characters. They didn't have Nova either to go with the Magic Knights and. Obviously, you can't really pose this, but whatever, what can you do? I like Mei Ling Li. She, yeah, she started out as a snot, but she is a total little badass. So now moving on to G.I. Joe. Now, before we get to Serpentor, we have Zorana. Well, why no unboxing for her? Because I actually found her loose at one of my local toy haunts. And it's just as well, because I was in... I really was kind of not in the mood to get any more G.I. Joes after the news of the layoffs and shit. But it doesn't really count if it's used, doesn't it? I was on the fence about getting her, but when I was able to see her close up out of the package, I figured, what the hell? 23 bucks, I'll do it. And that's cheaper than what it costs in the box, see? So, yeah, I don't have any Zorana in the box to keep for posterity, and I don't know if I ever will. Anyway, there's a lot of detail here. I don't... The only accessory I'm not really showing here is her... is her other hairstyle. So you can swap them out. More reminiscent of her 80s self, I believe. But whatever. You've got so much detail here. you got this zipper. The, the silver paint on the zipper and this buckle right here. you got textures on her jeans. You don't have any paint for the belt buckle there, but you do for the chain here, and some stitching on the boots. I mean, a lot of work went into this. That's why it's so fuckular that so many people, especially sculptors, got laid off from Hasbro. It's a good thing there's not much more I want from them, G.I. Joe-wise or otherwise. All that's been renounced that I really gotta have is Shipwreck. I'm still waiting for them to announce Jinx, because now I got plenty of Cobra agents. Now my Cobras way outnumber the G.I. Joes, but anyway... Yeah. She just looks right out of the 80s with the garish pink getup and... and the hair... but not too 80s, like the, I think the other hairstyle would have been. And you got this... <laughs> buzzsaw on her assault rifle, kind of invoking Gears of War now. We got a heated knife that goes into her backpack, and a regular knife right here that can be unsheathed. See? Oh, wait, that wasn't on camera. Years of d documenting my pickups, and I'm still no good at this, whatever. So, yeah. Zorana. Z I decided, for the price they were asking, at that store, for getting her loose, I couldn't pass her up. But now we get to the big mama jama, Serpentor. But first, let's talk about the air chariot. Now, I passed on the hiss tank, thinking that I couldn't justify $300 at the time, and I'd have no place to really display any vehicles, but... Hot frickin' damn, this is... This might be opening Pandora's box of finally starting to get vehicles for everything I got. I mean... It's not the most detailed vehicle out there, but you get, like, the rivets here, you got decals, you got, you got some detailing for the grill right here, some, no washes, but some textures right here, and then you got the thing right here, the cobra's mouth open up, you got an extra gun attached, you got these mounted machine guns that can be pulled out and used as a weapon themselves, going around and around, point is, you could stick anyone on here. Later on, I gotta do some photography, just like putting random figures on here and seeing how ridiculous they look. <sighs> but enough gushing about the air chariot, let's get to the man himself. Like I said earlier, possibly more than any other cartoon character, 
just symbolizes, personifies malignant narcissism. This co right out of the gate, just comes up and it demands to be attended to like a king. Just, even though it was clear that he could be slapped around by Sergeant Slaughter. I don't have all those accessories displayed here, and even though I unboxed them before the video, I didn't really dunk them in any hot water, even though some joints are stiff. We're just gonna go ahead with it. It's got all the standard articulation you expect from a modern Hasbro figure. Get that. Oh. This one doesn't want to stay in, it seems. Double jointed elbows. Double jointed wrists. Okay, this one was nice and supple. The other one, not so much. D a bit wobbly at the waist. Not as bad as Snake Eyes was, though, when I first unboxed him over almost three years ago. Decent ab crunch. Can't really turn his head. You need the other headdress for that to allow that, but since he's mostly going to be on display... I'm going to... Oh, for that for now, just... Okay, this one's loose. This one's... Well, this one's also loose. So yeah, I can nitpick this to high heaven like I did with Mumra a few months ago, but whatever. Sometimes I... Yeah, I did hear horror stories about how people cracked, broke off Sir Penny's limbs right out of the gate, so let's not get too crazy with it. But I don't have to get too crazy with the article because it looks great otherwise. Not really any washes, but like the scaly textures, and like little details like rivets on his chest plate, just the scowly expression, his... Yeah. Oh, and a cloth goods cape. Gotta love that. So this is probably how I'm gonna display him with his extra... extra long gauntlet blades and his scepter, just demanding to be attended to. Demanding that every... He, he commands and everyone obeys. This he commands. Yeah, whatever, buddy. So how to wrap this up? Well, as you can see, we also got a little influence from the East, some Pokemons. Ah, uh, Yeah... The select Pokémon from, like... I think th this one, at least, is a target exclusive. We got Typhlosion. He's more articulate than you might think. Look at him! Oh yeah, he's... He's like a weasel, right? He's like kind of like a big old Badger, so he can kind of scrunch around. You got a lot of articulation there. Articulated jaw. Arms articulated too, surprisingly so. He's got toe articulation. Yeah, Hasbro! Barely gotten back into toe articulation ever since taking over Marvel Legends. You only brought him back with what? Like the Renew Your Vow Spider Man and recycling the body for Daredevil? But yeah. Typhlosion. I never really played much of Pokemon second generation, gold, silver, what have you. I saw my brother play a lot of it on like a Super Game Boy. It looked nice, but I don't really have much nostalgia for the Gen 2 starters, but I figured, yeah, something this detailed and articulated and scales more or less great with all my six inch scale stuff, I had to. And I got one of the old school Oma stars from to say Tomy? Yeah, it does. This is another like Thmilling over there, sold back in the late 90s. I would love if they made a nice scale, one 12 scale Kabutops, because that was my favorite of the two prehistoric ones back then that you had to choose from, but oh well, Omastar is cool. So yeah, this video was about two G.I. Joe villain characters and two anime girls. So, if they faced off, well, Jibiusa, she's no stranger to guns, and <laughs> Mei Ling Li would be crazy enough to take on Cobra agents by herself. She's been trained in martial arts to take down people twice her size. Oh, but I just realized we also had two Pokemon we looked at this episode, so maybe they could have a Pokemon battle, but of course, uh, since these two are of the anime persuasion, they'd be more familiar with Pokémon, and they'd have something nice and big and evolved. But don't worry, Omanai, it's rock and water, it can resist fire just fine. Or maybe... 
just maybe those Pokémon are empathic enough to realize how high-strung these Cobra agents are, and so they just need a hug.